Essentially, you will see our performer. He is covered in markers. These markers are retro-reflective and they are tracked by the cameras that we build that are seen above you. These, these cameras understand their location in 3D space, meaning they can track the markers in 3D space. From this, we can then create objects or subjects such as people and props to track. If we could please turn on the unlabeled markers, we'll start with that. So this is what we see by default. Each of the dots that you see on screen represents a marker that's been tracked in 3D space by our Vero cameras. Now by default, there's no context to these. We need to understand the relationship between those markers before we can generate a skeleton that will be useful in, say, a game engine. To do this, we're going to do what's called a range of motion. So if we can A-pose, please. Are we good to go with a calibration? Cool, happy days, excellent. So Victor is now going to go through a range of motion. This is doing several things. On the one hand, it's allowing the system to see where these markers exist in relation to one another so it can assign them an identity, such as an elbow marker or a foot marker. In addition, it's also informing the system of certain extents of parts of the body so it can understand proportionally what our actor looks like. This includes things like leg length, arm length. It ensures that the digital character we have on screen is an extremely accurate representation of the performer themselves. It also means that by informing the system of the extents to which our actor can perform, we're gonna get the highest quality data out as a result. And there we go. So within 10 seconds, Victor has done a dance. It was a very moving dance. It was a very emotional dance. And now we have a skeleton that we can track in 3D space. Now let's take a look at what we are actually tracking. On the one hand, you'll see we're getting these really large motions, but we can also track at a far, far higher level of fidelity. If we zoom in on uh, Victor's hands, we'll see that we are also tracking fingers. Vicon is the only motion capture solution that has an optical approach to finger tracking, meaning the same approach that we use to track the body, we are able to track fingers as well with a high level of fidelity. So when, when we have interactions like fingers interlocking, we are able to capture all that. It also means that if our actor is to interact with a prop, that we get all the, all the fine scale movements of the hand interacting with that. So we'll see here, we can zoom in, not only are we able to track the prop, we are able to track the performer, and we don't need to worry about aligning those two things. Everything is in sync with time code, same coordinate space, meaning that we can start capturing data with a high level of confidence that we're getting what we need. Now, what you may notice, every now and again, we see these red dots appearing on screen. That's when a certain marker can no longer be seen by the cameras. So if I could ask Victor to please lie on his stomach or back, I'm I mean, that's in excess of what was required, but thank you for your commitment. You'll see now a series of red spheres. Those are the markers that the cameras can no longer see. But because they can see other markers, they are still able to track their position in 3D space with a high level of confidence. What this means from a performer perspective is we can encourage our actors to do whatever they want. Well, however they want to interact, however complex the move might be, whether it's a large fight scene or something more emotive and subtle, our system is built to cater for all those needs. Now let's take things to another level. If I could please ask River to rejoin the scene, a round of applause please for our second performer. Now you'll see River has just come straight into the scene. This is because we've already performed her range of motion. She has a unique marker layout on her back, meaning that now she can just walk into the scene and we can start capturing. Now we can actually take a look at how these things interact. If we could ask you to please to interlock your fingers. Even where we have these really fast scale movements, we can lock those individual fingers, how they're interacting. We don't need to worry about alignment because these are all in the same coordinate space. It just takes a lot of the guesswork and a lot of the hard work out of the process. It means our performers can just focus on their performance. It means that the creators can focus specifically on what they want to execute. These get more and more elaborate every single time we do a demo. You work on your handshake, that sounds great. Now a critical part of this is how it can be used in an iterative context. Let's do a take. So if we can please start capture, a pose and action. Sorry, I always end up going a bit quiet because I'm always worried that something's going to go wrong. And stop capture. Round of applause, please, for our incredible performance. Now we can play that back, and the data that we just shot is instantly available for review. 
We can play this back. We can stream that data into a game engine. We can, uh, apparently, people are really enthusiastic for this, which is great. We can play this back and we can use this to then inform what do we want to do next? How do we want to further elaborate upon this performance? All of this is achievable really quick, meaning that creators have the power of mocap right at their fingertips. Okay, if I could ask for one final round of applause for our performers, please. If you have any more questions about motion capture, please come and speak to myself, any of our support team. Thank you for your time and enjoy GDC. Thank you, everyone.